Good day everyone and welcome to Exile News, the weekly show that brings you all the important news and information on Path of Exile. And the first news this week has been Metamorph statistics about classes and challenges. So first up the challenges, as you can see the usual graph, it's around mid-league, a bit further than that. And uh, as you can see, there's uh, as usual a lot of players completing one challenge and then well, there's not even a curve anymore. It's just straight up a line uh, going from the second, the, the two challenges to the 36. Uh, the 40 challenges, probably just a bunch of people actually completed those. Uh, it's just time consumption at that point. To be honest, it's time consumption just from the get go. But anyway, you can see the percentages here 25% completing the 12 challenges, which sounds reasonable. 5% or almost 6 completing the 24 and just 1.3 completing the 36 feels a bit low definitely feels more like a grind than a challenge itself also this graph is, is pretty skewed because you can see the 24 and the 36 are almost the same height however 24 should be like 5 times the value of 36 so I don't know really what to take from this graph doesn't feel uh, really uh, accurate as it should be uh, the one challenge should be taken off and maybe scaled everything else. The fact that it's not even a curve like it used to be uh, also tells me that, well, probably just either players uh, just play for 5 seconds and then drop, or uh, the challenges aren't really well balanced as they used to be. But anyway, uh, we also got something about the ascendancies, and uh, well, you can see for all levels, all leagues and everything, the Witch is the most popular one, and the Necromancer is right behind, surpassing the other base classes. And the fact the base classes are up here is because uh, when considering all levels and all leagues, you actually get a lot of people who don't really play to, to the Ascendance level, or just create a character, or just drop it, or just new players and that kind of stuff. So having uh, an Ascended class higher than these base classes should tell you about the popularity of that ascendancy. In fact, when we watch pretty much every other statistic like level 70 plus, 90 plus, whatever league, you can see the Necromancer is well on top of everything and Assassin and Saboteur which got a little bit of a rework. Uh, Dead Eye, well, uh, not as high as expected because most likely uh, the metamorph just wrecks everything uh, that can't take one hit or two so if you go hardcore uh, you can actually see that the juggernaut the guardian and the champion go up high of course not even close to necromancer but still very defensive classes also the two classes that can uh, have uh, the herald of agony skill are very high in Arcor, which is definitely not surprising. In the Metamorph, Soul Cell found, of course, Saboteur and Trickster being very high because they are mostly spell based or trap mind based, so they don't really need um, much of a gear to get going. Necromancer just uh, topping the chart as always. Necromancer again on the Xbox One. The Dying Elementalist are very up. Uh, differently from the other leagues but I suspect it's because playing those skills or those classes with a controller is actually pretty good like arc with elementalist or tornado shot chain with dead eye uh, definitely not requiring any type of aiming whatsoever the same goes for uh, the PS4 of course where the slayers is actually a bit higher but that's because you just do slayer cyclone as cyclone is another skill that feels awesome to play on a controller so really uh, just things just as expected and I wonder if necromancers are gonna get nerfed next leagues uh, we'll have to see but most likely yes otherwise it's just gonna be the same meta again we also got some microtransactions concept art and you can see uh, a very good one in my opinion which came out so much better than the actual concept art is this, this winter themed microtransactions like the armor, the bow, uh, the shield and all that kind of stuff, it's pretty good. However, there's also the infamous miracle uh, microtransaction body armor and the kind of stuff. 
Well, I don't even know what to say about this. Honestly, it feels so far off from Path of Exile that I have no idea how this got created. But yeah, so did Joker stuff and uh, Clown stuff. So yeah, not surprised that much. Honestly, people just want cool armor sets. Uh, this is just not that kind of stuff. I mean, uh, it's not bad in itself. It just it doesn't fit Path of Exile at all. And yeah. Personally, I think it's also bad in itself, but it's, that's just my opinion at that point. Anyway, we also are celebrating the seven years since open beta. This was last week, which was this, the anniversary, and the open beta was launched early 2013. Time flies, huh? And we got a bit of a walk down memory lane. Here by GGG, starting with the open beta trailer, which actually is their most viewed videos up to date, with up to 2 million views, which is kind of incredible. And there's just all of this, all of the things, starting from the spork totems, creep burning discharge builds, like very old stuff, going down up to the latest streamers stuff that's happening right now. So. Uh, definitely interesting trip. If you if you've been part of this, definitely give it a look. If you haven't been part of this, uh, just give it a look to see how the ch how the game changed uh, in time. It's very impressive, actually. Also, we got some highlights from the talent competition, and again, there's a lot of fan art, and this is pretty actually pretty good. And there's some musics as well. So if you're interested in, the kind of, in these kind of things, definitely. Uh, give it a look. Other than that, we also got a community creator interview with Path of Derek. And Derek is one of the most prolific uh, hideout creators right now, actually creating very, very high quality hideouts. And well, there's all of the story, how he got started and all that kind of things. And then there's some hideouts, some examples of microtransaction like this Nessa statue here. It's fucking amazing and uh, it's incredible how it creates all this kind of stuff. There's a lot of images throughout the post and these are definitely really interesting so if you are interested in hideouts and that kind of stuff definitely give a look at this post. If you haven't done anything uh, still give it a look because you might uh, find out that it's really interesting that it's a world that you might want to dive into. So yeah highly recommended actually. And I guess that was also all for this week, so if you enjoyed the video leave a like and a comment down below. Also, if you want to remain updated every week, be sure to subscribe to my channel. That was all, I've been your host Giorgio, and I'll see you guys the next time.